First off, I'd like to say uh, I'm making this video for my grandchildren one day. Um, I'll put it in the cloud after I get done, but some of y'all might find this interesting. It's kind of a unique uh, situation I found myself in a lot of years ago. I wanted to bring something to you. It's been a challenge for me for years, on and off, looking up an old friend of mine back when we were in the military together. I'm going to tell you a little story, and it's kind of freaky. At first, when I married my wife, I told her this story, and she just rolled her eyes like I was making it up. Until she saw a documentary on TV of circus freaks. And then she believed me. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a quick movie here in just a second that I happened to find today. For years, I've been looking for Tony, their adopted son. What this is is Priscilla and Emmett. They were circus, what you could call circus freaks back in the 40s and 50s and 60s until politically correctness came around and ruined their livelihood where they couldn't even work in the circus as freaks anymore. Priscilla and Emmett loved working in the freak show, the side shows. They made a lot of money. She had beauticians and nail people who did her nails and treated her like royalty. Uh, but to make a long story short, uh, their adopted son, they had a daughter that later died in uh, when she was a child. And they later on adopted a son who went in the Marine Corps, and that's where I met him. Uh, my last year after I left the Rock, which is known as Okinawa, I was at Camp Lejeune as an instructor. He was one of my students. And one day when I was walking through the barracks, we didn't have rooms. We had uh, like 70 beds in a room, and the only thing separating them were uh, lockers. But there was a group of guys in a corner laughing their asses off. So I walk over there, and I see this guy eating light bulbs, and then he pulls out a long pen, probably about six inches long, maybe longer than that, sticking it through his arm and barely any blood coming out. I got to know this guy. Tony, and uh, he was kind of like the freak of the of, of the platoon, but he was a fun guy to be around. And uh, right before Chris, uh, Thanksgiving, him and his buddy wanted to ride down to uh, outside Sarasota where his parents lived. Now, he didn't tell me his mother was the monkey girl and his dad was uh, the alligator man. Now, the other guy that we I, I took was uh, in the mafia, but he didn't tell me that till we got down there. His dad was in the mafia. So we drive down there. It's about 14, 16 hour drive from Camp Lejeune outside Sarasota. And we knock on the door and Priscilla opens the door. She's got a full beard. I didn't know what, whether, whether to laugh or cry, feel sorry for her or why. But they enjoyed their life in the circus. They really did. They were a very loving couple. It really made an impression on me. These two that were what you could basically call deformed, were very loving to everybody and to themselves. We had Thanksgiving outside where all, there's a large community of retired uh, circus performers and they all get together for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we were outside eating with all the circus freaks and it, it was hilarious, I had a great time. Uh, but they did put an imprint of, of their love in my mind. They were very kind and gentle but the other guy, we go over to a filling station, and this big heavy set guy comes out. He's got dirt all over his hands, looks nasty. Uh, he says, hey, Dad. And, he's, and Dad says, well, listen, you guys go down to the house and get your beer and some sandwiches. So he shows me where to go. We go down there, and we go through this road, and there's this huge house on a lake, all solid glass in the front. Yeah, that was a guy at the filling station's house. He didn't work for the filling station. I mean, he worked for the, you know, keep the government off his butt. But he worked for the mob. His dad was a mobster. And we went in there. There were two beautiful blondes in there. And I'm not going to go into everything, but we had a great time. I had plenty of beer and plenty of sandwiches. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I've been looking for Tony, just trying to see if, if I could locate him. I kind of got an idea of where he is. The weird thing about it was every time I'd look up a video or see an article on Priscilla and her husband, they never mentioned the adopted son. 
they always mentioned the dead child, the dead daughter that uh, died in child when she was a child, but never Tony. But I ran across something today, and I'm fixing to show it to you guys. You all have a good day, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy today to get more information. You all take care. They are, of course, part of a passing parade. It is the imagination of man that makes him remarkable. The couple that lives here has been married happily for 42 years. Now, what did he do with my shovel? Never can find that shovel. Where's my deer? I, he always takes off when I go to plant something. I'm known as the alligator of the crocodile skin man. My name is Emmett Pagano, and here is my wife, Priscilla. I'm known as Priscilla the Monkey Girl, and we are called the strangest married couple. We eloped. We eloped and got married. We eloped. He never proposed. He eloped and says, this is it. We eloped, and at 3 o'clock in the morning. I knew he was the one for me, and I guess he knew. But I was uh, the one for him. So uh, we, uh, we eloped. I went up and picked her up at 3 o'clock in the morning out of her trailer. She threw all of her clothes into a bed sheet because uh, she didn't want her, her, her adopted father to know that she was leaving. But he found us. Priscilla, what appealed to you about Emmett? What was it about Emmett that you found so attractive? Well, well, one thing, I was better looking then than <laughs> I am now. <laughs> I and just took that out of my of mouth. <laughs> That's was one good. thing, you know. You see, you don't look at what they are. You, their personality. And what's inside. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, I can see all the beautiful things. They got things uh, her, a good heart. And uh, That uh, means a lot. Do you like being totally unique in the world? Or? Yes, I do. I well, really we're do. Different. We're different. We're different. We know that. And I was teasing him the other day. I said, I think I'll shave him and dye my hair blonde and have a new look. He said, you do? Then I'm going to walk out on you. <laughs> he says, I love you as you are. Even in Gibsonton, there is a certain challenge for Priscilla to go out shopping in an ordinary supermarket. Just like I went to the store a couple weeks ago. And the lady says, oh, I feel sorry for you. Are you doing anything for your teeth? And I says, no, ma'am. I says, I only had one pull, but it's getting along fine. She says, you did? I had all of mine at once, she said. And it just gave me a fit. She says, I noticed you got it. I says, yeah, I don't want to catch cold in it. And that's I all it was. It off. Passed it off. I should have just went like that and moved. <laughs> She'd have had them all in that store running. <laughs> what does love mean to you? Love is much happiness, I think, and and to be and loved and companionship and to be loved by people that come in the show to see you from time to time, the year to year, and <laughs> my neighbors. Thank you, Bob. My son. I really didn't have very many problems. I was proud of my mother and father the way they were, and I accepted them the way they were. They were just mother and father for me. There's a lot of love and happiness for us, even though we are like this.